the manager believed in me every time in my my rehab he was um telling me are you ready are you close yeah. so i thought yeah you know what when i'm get when it's game time it's game time for me yeah, so, yeah coming on i just got the, the chills and uh just them just the fans screaming my name yeah. cheering me one of one of their own um is lit man and i love the norwich fans like forever norwich as a place will be i'm a fan of norwich city for life now because of yeah. how they've treated me um, i went there as a boy and i left as a man and i owe them that yes sir i'm your host leroy and welcome back to the insight but before we start could you make sure you like subscribe and hit the notification bell for any new content that will be coming your way very soon but without further ado Enjoy the pod. Sticking in my headphones. Alright, cool, cool, cool. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. How are you keeping? Okay, man. I'm okay. I just preseason vibes. You know how it is. Yeah, I was about to ask. How's everything going back into that? Yeah, it's alright. Um, obviously, new season, new challenges. Um, yeah, just trying to just trying to have a better season than I did last season. Um. Yeah, man. Just you know, it is just running. Oh, we haven't even touched the ball. Hardly touched the ball yet. So, oh, I was, was like, I, was today okay. first? Was today first or second day? Uh, today was technically our third day. First day we did uh, quarantine. I mean, we did COVID testing. Okay. And then um, second day we did a run. Third day we did a run. <laughs> I know this is our fourth day. Yeah, it's our fourth day in. Um, and then yeah, today we did a little bit of passing, but you know that token one, the token passing drills, and then you're off running two yeah. minutes later. <laughs> yeah, 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 them ones, them ones. Nah, fair play. What do you call it? Did you get a good holiday in after? So obviously, it was a short break, in it? Yeah, it was short. Um, the last few, the last year or so, last couple of seasons, I've had like seven and a half weeks. So this this year, I only ended up having like five weeks, which obviously I'm appreciating all. But um, I ended up having a uh, hernia operation. Ooh. Um. After the season, I was struggling like for about at least a third of the season, uh, oh. last third of the season. So I just had a hernia repair, got that all sorted out. I moved house as well recently back home. So just trying to sort all that out. I ended up didn't go on holiday. I was gonna go to Portugal, but then I got stuck on the amber list. Mm. I went. I went all for that quarantining and stuff like that. So yeah, just a just a, a summer at home, which will be few and far between in the in the future. So I just enjoyed it, man. Yeah, how's the family though? Good man. Yeah, good, good, good. Everyone's good. My mum lives in my house now. Yeah, that's she, nice. she lives. She she lives in North London, so that's nice. Um, yeah, dad's good. Sister's good. Family's good, man. It's good. It's a good, good, good space to be in right now. Is the sister still running? No. Nah. <laughs> nah. No chance, bro. <laughs> nah, no chance, no chance. Nah, fair play, fair play. Let's get this started though. Cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Insight. Today we've got my guy from early, Jamal Lewis. How you doing, bro? I'm good, bro. How are you? I'm all blessed, man. I'm all blessed. Um, yeah. bro, what do you call it? Most people were knowing it, but when you first like all started, when I met you before you were running, isn't it? Um, yeah. Talk me through that, innit? Like most people won't know about that, innit? Well, in terms of my running background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, I think I've always been okay at running from when I was younger. Uh, my mum always helps because my mum was an athletics coach. So whenever my my sister used to do athletics and my mum would coach, have a group, and I just got come along with my football and do my stuff and enjoy that. Um, but then, like, I don't know, I think, I don't know what age specifically, but then I started to join in a little bit. I started to enjoy it. And as you do when you're younger, you just anything you pick up it just you just run with it you know and um I just saw improvements and I enjoyed it and then I ended up doing a few races and I realized oh like I'm I'm quite good at this you know I'm, I'm beating these guys so yeah, yeah um yeah I did a flex from up to the age of 16 mm. until I did my scholar at Norwich so yeah it's a really enjoyable kind of thing to have in my life and it's good that I kind of didn't um looking back at it didn't like put all my attention onto football so early in my life you know so yeah I was going to say, because I remember back then, like, you, Frankie, Zane were just killing the run stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frankie's, Frankie's a fit one as well, you know. Frankie's yeah, a fit one. I think I remember one set when I was, when we was younger, I, we did, like, a yo-yo test or a beep test, and I killed it. I killed my age group. And then all of a sudden, next week, 
or like a, maybe it's like a month later, Frankie. I was like, oh yeah, I'm easily the best runner here. Then Frankie next to me in the runs, running. I was like, yo, okay, okay, I see you, Frankie. You're competitive and you can run. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's cold, he's cold. Shout out to Frankie yeah, and that. Um, but yeah, obviously you were saying that you were playing football whilst running, but now you started mm. like obviously progressing slowly. How did you get into football in the first place? Um, also a natural thing. Um, even from when I was younger, my mom, my mom, even when I don't remember, my mom said, yo, like you always had a football in your hands, he's always doing this, doing that. Um, from when I remember, probably I remember trying to get into a team. I was too young. I played a couple like years. Like, I think it's like under six might have been the youngest you could do. So probably yeah. six year, uh, age of six. So I did. Yeah, probably did a couple years uh, grassroots Sunday league football. My dad was my manager, so that was <laughs> that. That had his pros and his cons. I was about wrong. to say, yeah. Um, obviously, you look back fondly, but in the moment, <laughs> it used to be a lot of frustration, a lot of uh, pressure put on me at such a young age, which isn't a good thing, really. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so I did Sunday League for a bit and then I ended up getting scouted. Well, it's actually a funny story. I don't even think I got scouted. My dad just brought me to a trial. Wow. So funny. Yeah, just brought me there because he, he knew I was good enough, you know? Yeah. He brought me there and just said, like, listen, like, my son's good. Like, never like, what the, like what's, what's going on here? You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, my son's good. Like, give, why don't you just give him a try and see? You know what I mean? And then obviously at that age, you're under nine, so you can get, get away with that. Mm. Um, yeah, and they they see me and they, they I got a trial. And yeah, I got in at Luton, Luton Academy, which was kind of like where I laid my cement and my, my groundwork for for the future. That's mad because when I came, like everyone had been there from like under nines. Like we're talking mm. Luke, Isaac, you, yeah, Frankie, yeah, 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 James. Yeah, yeah. Like I was yeah. like, yo, these men been kicking from early, early. <laughs> nah, that's cold. Um, early. obviously you're like now playing and progressing and whatnot how did you find that Luton? um i enjoyed it definitely the first first bit obviously i think you was there as well when it was kind of like obviously it's very geared around or it's very the academy is obviously driven around the academy needs money and the academy is driven around first team obviously at that point Luton had gone through administration and um going down the league and obviously you kind of you don't really as an academy footballer, really, really young academy footballer, you don't really understand what that means for you. No. Um, but I did I, a couple of years on, it kind of trickled down. You start playing you, like, you, oh, well, we, oh, we was cat two or cat three and now we're cat four. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. No. You start playing worse teams. You start getting less kit. You start having <laughs> to pay for the, tri- the, for the trips and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I started to realise that. And then they come to a point where, I don't know, there was like this whole thing where like people, all the academy players could just leave you know oh, and then bro. it was it, it was just a free-for-all I was like all right cool I'm cutting out um I had a few clubs that I, I wanted to go to anyway I ended up picking Brentford yeah I like the setup there man it was nice yeah. it was good I actually met the academy manager the other day in um um in Brent Cross shopping center, Aussie. Oh, sweet. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, Aussie, yeah, 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 yeah. Aussie, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I met him the other day. Um, we just had a little catch up there. But um, yeah, I went Brentford, and that didn't really work out for me. I was like, but you know, sometimes footballers go through that, especially young footballers go through like growing pains and yeah. your ankles are sore and your knees is happening, this and that. So yeah. I think I was definitely at Brentford going through that. Um, and I ended up coming back to Luton actually. Really? For yeah, yeah. My comeback to Luton, I did under 15s to almost under yeah, bit of the under 16s, and then all bro, it's just like I just lost the enjoyment. Really? Um, I'm always big for competition and improve. Like my whole mantra is, I I never want to be stagnant in life, you know, in anything I do. And I just felt like there was just like, I just yeah, just get just play football, you know. And no, I just, yeah. it, it wasn't the same, you know. It wasn't the same people there, same coaches, same setups. So. Just kind of fell out of love with it a little bit. Not football, but Luton and what the kind of the academy set up there. And then I kind of just knocked it on the head. Um, well, I said I focused on my GCSEs, but I didn't really. It was, it was you know what I mean? Year 11, yeah. I, it was just a good, ex- good excuse. But yeah, um, yeah so for about like eight months, running kind of took over. Wow. I did running because um, I was always good at I was always at like a national level. So it yeah, was easy yeah. for me to kind of just put, put that in the forefront. And go from there but then um yeah it's just always I wanted to go back to football and then um yeah it's Greg Greg actually contacted contacted my mum and said 
listen, I know Jamal's got talent. Um, I'm at Norwich now. It's a great setup here. Um, I mean, come down for a trial and a scholar level and do it. And I said, and then once I had that message, I was like, yeah, let's go. Let's yeah, do it. And then, smart. yeah, travelled down to Norwich at 16. And then yeah, I had a good trial and then, yeah, got got my scholar, man. So that was like my second second stage in my life where I put my brickwork down. Yeah, it was huh. really good, man. Yeah, that's, that's sick because I remember you were saying, obviously, that that time when Luton were going through the admin issues, everyone was just, like, cutting in different places. like Cutting, yeah, bro. All the good players, everyone dipping out. It was mad. But it was, so, it was so weird then because, like, I feel like no one really understood what was going on. But it felt, like, I mean. it felt like anybody could just leave all of a sudden. <laughs> But then, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know, Luton done something and brought a couple of men back. I was one of them. Yeah, bro, they tried, they tried that one with me as well. I was like, yo. <laughs> That's not, because What's I... Going on here? It was, I think they must have been like, oh, like, there was a rule that came in and it was like, every year you're at a team, it's like a certain amount. Compensation. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't even know, bro. Obviously, at that age, you're just like, you do whatever your dad told you to do, innit? My dad told me, we're good in it so I went and I cut out so but I ended up coming back but um yeah because Luton's my hometown no matter what regardless I've got got love for, for the town and yeah. for the people there so yeah it was sick obviously you're you're talking about you're going on tours and stuff and all that stuff like how was that yeah. experience for you I know that your age group uh, won a tour in it yeah it's bro it's literally priceless man it's priceless like the memories you make at such a young age like you said we want to a big big tournament at the age of under nines um called Arrow Masters an indoor football tournament yeah and obviously English teams you don't really do the indoor thing you know we're yeah. built and bred for physicality and this and that. obviously technically you see like a lot of the English players now in the in the uh, national team they're not like so wonderfully skilled and technical ability but like maybe then it was it's more like geared towards physicality in the English game you know yeah um so like we didn't really, it, you, you weren't really expected to do well in them kind of tournaments because them man literally played a whole winter, they play whole winters in indoors, isn't it? Indoor, yeah. So, yeah, so we just went there, we seen all these teams, we had like Ivory Coast National Team and they were like looking, then it's like, under, yeah, Bolo, bro. Bolo, <laughs> like, yo, let me see your passport. Like, you, look, you, look, you look 13, bro, not nine, you know Trust what I mean? Me. Um, so yeah, yeah, that was really enjoyable, bro. Just things like that, um, not winning that, and yeah, just going to Germany and Sweden, and bro, it's just so priceless, like exploring the world. Yeah. And I'm big for it now, still. It's just like just to be able to say, oh yeah, I've been to, have you been to Switzerland? Oh yeah, I've been to Switzerland. Have you been to Austria? Oh yeah, I've been. You know what I mean? So, um, it just it just gives you so much more of a perspective at such a young age, and you create so much so much memory. So yeah, that that I love that man. No, yeah, Especially I love that. Not too long ago, I was obviously speaking to my dad and we were just reminiscing on times. Like, I think they came with me to Austria one time. And I think that's yeah. when my, my dad must have watched you, but you must have been, like, younger, younger yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you said, it's mad prices to go to them different countries. And then even thinking about it now, I don't know if you guys played them, but we played, um, like, Salzburg and all these teams. Mm. And back then, you didn't really know about them teams like that. <laughs> but now, you know about them still. Yeah, 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 exactly. You see them in the Champions League, you're like, yo, oh, oh, I played that setup. Oh, okay, I played that too. Yeah, exactly. You don't really know. You just you just show up and play. Mm, 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 you know mm. what I mean? You just show up and play. So, um, yeah, it's a great experience, like you said, man. No, for sure. Obviously, your time came at, to an end, and obviously, you transferred to Norwich. How was that feeling of leaving and going and competing and um, stuff? Yeah, obviously, I, like I said, I had a little bit of a layoff for like eight months. So it didn't feel like a, a transition from Luton to Norwich. It was like, Luton, okay, what do I want to do? Okay, Norwich is here. Let me yeah. put my all in this and go from there. So I've obviously moved to Norwich. Um, digs, like first experience of digs and stuff yeah. like that. Um, yeah, so it was... Nah, you know, I, nah. I don't really, nah, I don't, I don't think I was, <laughs> I was just so, I was so determined, bro, like, when I put my mind to something, yeah. any, anything that I've willed into my life, it's eventually come, you know, mm. and it's only the older I get, the more I realise this, that my mind is my strongest tool, so it's like, back then, I didn't even see it like that, I was just so, so hard-headed, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a contract here, I'm gonna get, you know what I mean, but then you realise, like, then you start, then obviously once I got signed, you see like how many trialists come through and don't get signed. You're like, 
oh, I, I've done well there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just different. Like a lot of local Norwich boys. So I was getting used to that kind of kind of guy and yeah. they're different, you know, they're different. Um, and, but yeah, nah, I settled in. I made some friends, made some friends for life, man. Um, mm. But I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Um, besides the injuries, I kind of got knocked back a few times with injuries and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I kind of didn't really hit. I hit my. Sh- I was like really. A, I was a player that hit hit his stride, and then get a setback or hit a stride, okay. and something would happen. And then um, there was just a point where I think I was eighteen or nineteen, where I played in front of the first team coaching staff. Okay. Um, because at this point I still wanted to be a winger, right? Oh yeah, I remember. Um, that, so. I still wanted to be a winger, and then um, I was you know, playing me left back. I was like, oh, uh, I don't know about this. you know what I mean? Go, like, yeah. So yeah, so they played me. So we played Dynamo, Dynamo Zagreb in this like international cup thing with under twenty for the under twenty ones. Yeah. And um, yeah, all the first team were there because they dropped dropped down a lot of good players that weren't playing first team, mm. but like were good, like Josh Murphy, um, James Madison. Um, Harry, like bear, just bear guys. So we had like yeah, a yeah. sick team. So the first team come to watch, and I just played really well, man. I played really well. I stepped up to the occasion, and from then the first, um, I just got kept training first team every day, every day, every day. Sometimes I'd play under twenty ones matches, then train yeah. first team the next day, stuff like that. So I put in a really good. That's when I really started to see like my name was getting out there in within the club at a good level. Okay. Um, because because before that I wasn't even I was on the bench in the under twenty ones, you know. So I just wow. kind of took my op- yeah, I took my opportunity, and then actually happened. This was the season that the gaffer got sacked, which was Alex Neil. Okay. And then all the coaching stuff left at the end of the season. So I was like, oh, oh god, yeah. I'm, putting all, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm putting all this work. Yeah, I put all this work um, for six months. Like I've oh, just done so well. Like I thought next season is my season. New ma- new manager comes in, foreign manager, new setup, sporting yeah. director. I was like, oh god, I've got to start from square one. But don't get me wrong, I backed myself, trained hard, come to it. But funny enough, um, the sporting director had actually watched a few of our matches, and I think he'd done a lot of background chat, uh, background checks on the players, and asked the staff on da 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 da. And I'm, I've always been hardworking. I've always done my stuff, but done it in in silence, but. In, around the training around the training ground, people are gonna see you. You know, if I go into yeah. the dome, there's gonna be coaches there. Yeah. If I go the back of the dome, people will see me. Go, you know what I mean? So people know I work hard. Yeah. Um. So that must have got to him. I think he liked that, and they wanted to push. Obviously, I didn't know at the time, but the manager loves young players and oh, how moldable, moldable they can be, and how much output they can put in and stuff like that. So I was just a perfect fit, man. And yeah. and yeah, I, I was just. First day, I thought I was with the 21s, and now I just got, no, 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 you're with, you're with the first team. I said, all right, Sweet. cool. Yeah, 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 let, I'll me, take that. let me run, Let me run with that. And then, yeah, everything was um, history from then on. But you know what's mad? That, like, most people don't understand that, like, you can be an amazing player with one coach, but a new setup and all these people coming with new ideas. It's like, like you said, you're starting afresh, and obviously you believe in yourself because you've obviously gotten yourself to that point. But sometimes mm-hmm. it's really, like, the manager needs to be like bring me into the plans as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent, bro. If you don't have a manager that believes in you, like really believes in you, it's game over. Okay. Because oh, not game over, but it's like it's it's a mountain to climb. Let's be honest. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've I've fit the mold of the a young player that's enthusiastic that wants to be molded, wants to learn, and that's athletic. I fitted I fit the kind of the mold of what how he wanted to play his fullbacks and energy. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was a match made in heaven, you know, and I enjoyed it. It was the only setback I got was really another injury. I never yeah. had a, a a knee surgery, a meniscal repair, uh, which knocked me back because I think I was going to start the first game of the championship season. Yeah, and I just got knocked back, and I ended up playing uh, half of the season instead. Um, but yeah, and then uh, and then after that season, that's the season we got promoted. Bro. I was going to say, let's reel it back a little bit. Um, yeah. obviously, let's go. Your first debut, your first start, and then your first goal in it. So obviously, okay. I know your first your first debut was probably December against Brentford. You've come on. How yeah, was that yeah, feeling? Yeah. Obviously, <laughs> now you <laughs> took me through that, bro. Crazy, um, crazy, bro. Like it's what you dream of yeah. as a footballer. I'm making my debut in the championship, bro. Like not many people can say that. You know mm. what I mean? 
players get you loaned out, get this and that. Um, I had setbacks. Um, I had a knee surgery. They could have easily just kept playing the guy in front of me. Mm. But the manager believed in me. Every time in my, my rehab, he was um, telling me, are you ready? Are you close? Yeah. I thought, yeah, you know what? When, I'm get, when it's game time, it's game time for me. Yeah, but, yeah coming on, I just got the, the chills and uh, just them just... The fans screaming my name, yeah. cheering me, one of one of their own. Um, it's lit, man. And I love the Norwich fans. Like forever Norwich as a place will be. I'm a fan of Norwich City for life now because of yeah. how they've treated me. Um, I went there as a boy and I left as a man. And I owe them that. Um, and then what was it? So my first that was my first, first start. No, that was, was my first appearance. First yeah. start. Um, nervous. <laughs> I think how, it's how? Real. Was it Millwall? No, Birmingham. Nah, it was... That's poor. I don't Birmingham even know City. Birmingham, Birmingham, Birmingham City, City, bro. <laughs> That's poor, bro. I don't even know my first start. Like, what? Too many games, eh? Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Birmingham. Yeah, nervous. Yeah. Um, I think that was the day I realised I like playing away from home as well. Because I thought, oh, home, yeah. away games are a bit hostile. and duh, 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 duh. But um, we played... Yeah, I played really well. I played against uh, Hota. Um not not Diego, Diego, your uh, the other uh, there's another one that played played for Berman at the time. And uh-huh. yeah. And um he was really good. He had come from Brentford, he had played a really good season, yeah. uh, big hit us. I, like, I got my work cut out, but yeah. I played really well, man. I played really well. Um and then we, yeah, we ended up winning two 0 I think, and then the fans ended up getting on the Birmingham City um oh, players. And I was just I was buzzing. I was yeah. like, yo, oh, I like this feeling. So coming to a, coming to a man's home, <laughs> yeah, giving him a beating, and then the fans are getting on them. Oh, I like this feeling. <laughs> That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, so I like that. So that was good, man. That was good. Um, and then my first goal against Chelsea was coming Chelsea. a few games, few games later. Um, yeah, that was just surreal as well, bro. So obviously that's my first Premier League experience playing against yeah. the Premier League opposition. It was just like. Wow, like I played, I played against. This was the year after they got um, won the league, I think. Yeah. And they just like I was playing against William most of the time. I was, I was, I was like say, a yeah. whatever, but William just I was just like, wow, this this is I've never been exposed to something like this in my life. Like yeah. the sharpness, the speed of thought, the speed of movement, everything was just crazy. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But I I played well. The team hung in there. And yeah, it's just like it was just a natural thing where just like my my centre. So we played a three five two. My centre back was like in my position. Yeah. Uh, Tim Tim Close. I was like, what are you doing? Like, what are you yeah. doing? I was like, all right, all right, cool. So I was like, I might as well just I don't know go in the box. Okay. And then he just whipped a serious cross. I can't lie, the cross was serious. Like yeah. all it needed was a little, you know, little little, <laughs> little, little flick in the net. <laughs> um, Tom yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just I just helped it on, man. Just instinctual. Yeah. And then yeah, just obviously that's just like a almost like a come out, come out, coming out to the party moment for Jamal Lewis a little bit. Um, yeah. Put me on the map and just yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't win because we lost on penalties, but it was a great experience to go against such an opposition and yeah, just just be exposed to that at such early doors. Premier League op- opposition, it kind of gave your like got my feet wet and was like yeah, that's the level yeah. I want to play at. We can, yeah. we can't. Yeah, and you were saying how you were switched from playing left wing to left back. And mm. like slowly climbing up levels and playing against hard oppositions. How have you found? Obviously, now you played a long time in it, but how did you find it then? Like playing left back and learning kind of new stuff because it's it's a lot different, isn't it? Listen, bro, I'm still learning. Yeah, it's crazy. You're still learning. Even being at Newcastle, I've had the switch style, and I'm still learning. Like hopefully this year, I have a great year, great season with my team, and. But the change of style, even for a left for a left back here compared to Norwich, is very different. You know how I yeah. played, my decisions that I make on the ball, um, where I need to be, position. You know what I mean? Where the manager wants me, what the manager yeah. wants me to do, expects from me. So it's very different. And in the first season, I struggled with that a little bit. So that's what we're looking to rectify this year. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, but yeah, it's different. I'm forever learning. I'm obviously got a lot of energy. I like going forward, attacking my man, getting crosses in the box, and and I want to create chances for my team, but also um, be in a position where I can be stop the crosses and 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 almost nullify nullify the best wingers in the league as well. So yeah, mm-hmm. for me, it's just always a always a learning curve that I can I can kind of come off, and I try and watch all the best best fullbacks in the league, and and hopefully 
within the next few seasons, I can be one of them. No, for sure, man. You're going about it the right way. That's the pinnacle, you know? You know how many players want to play in the Premier League? Even top players in the, in other leagues want to play in the Premier League, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it was it's, it was great to do that and showcase my talents on the biggest stage. And obviously that led me to get a move to Newcastle, which I'm, which I'm so grateful for. Yeah.